Hello, hello, good morning, everyone from Canada. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're having a nice Wednesday. It's the middle of the week. We're almost at the weekend. And wherever you are in the world, I hope that you are doing well and that things are going okay in life. Welcome to this live lesson. In this live lesson, we're going to talk about how to call in sick to work. That will be the topic. And the reason that we're speaking about this is because very recently I opened an online English club called jacobsenglishclub.com. That's the website. And in this club, this month, we're speaking all about work. We're talking about workplace culture. We're talking about relationships between bosses and employees. The theme this month inside of the club is work. So I thought this would be a fun lesson to do on YouTube live like this. And before we begin, before I tell you what's going to happen in this live lesson, I just want to explain the phrase call in sick to work because I don't think it's as common in other countries, perhaps, as it is here in Canada or in the US. Uh, so basically, if you call in sick to work, it means that you call your boss and tell your boss that you can't come to work that day because you are too sick. Okay, so imagine that you wake up and you feel horrible. Your nose is runny, you have a headache, you can barely get out of bed, you can barely speak, you're extremely sick. So you call your boss and you say, I can't come to work, I'm sick. That's calling in sick to work. You just called in sick to work. Now, something else that's common here in Canada and in the US too, and in many other countries I'm sure, is sometimes people call in sick to work without actually being sick. So they're lying, basically. They're calling their boss and they're saying, uh, sorry, boss, I can't come into work today. I'm sick. But really, they're just lying at home, being lazy, watching TV, and uh, that happens too sometimes. So it doesn't matter whether you're lying or whether you're actually sick. That process of calling your boss and saying that you can't come to work because you're sick is called calling in sick to work. So I see some people are watching in the chat room. Nabil is here. Yes, in my country we do it, says Nabil. Patricia is here from France. Taylor Huang from Korea. Taylor, good to see you again. It's been a while. Could I speak a little louder? I tested the volume and I thought it was okay. If anyone else is struggling to hear me in this live stream, let me know in the comment section. Uh, otherwise, Taylor, you might have to turn the volume up a little. I think it's okay over here, but let me know anyone if you're having problems hearing me. Huang Vu from Vietnam is watching. Good evening to you in Vietnam, Huang Vu. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. RJ is here too. Hello, RJ. So let's get started here. And here's how this lesson is going to work. How to call in sick to work. What I'm going to do is I'm going to... Oh, where is my website? There it is. I'm going to go through someone's what someone wrote online. Someone typed up some advice about how to call in sick to work. And this advice, it, it pertains to calling in sick to work when you're lying. So we're going to read this response and we're gonna learn some new vocabulary words along the way. I have a lot of questions for you so you'll be able to practice and it should be a lot of fun. So here's some of the new vocabulary words you're going to learn. And perhaps some of you already know some of these vocabulary words, perhaps some of you don't, but we'll go over each and every one of these, okay? So, let slip, coming down with, politely decline, figured, and trooper. Trooper is a nice slang word that we'll learn at the end. Let's read this guy's post. This is from the website, uh, what website was it from? Quora, I think. I believe so, and this is an anonymous person who is responding to the question, how, how do you call in sick to work? How should you call in sick to work? So anonymous says, one thing you have to do is live the lie in full. 
This means not only lying to your boss and all your colleagues, but to your friends and family too. If you've called in and said you have a headache, tell your mates you have a headache as well and stay home. This way, nobody can accidentally let slip that they've just spent the afternoon with you in the pub. Okay, so again, this person is talking about when you're calling in sick to work and you're lying. Just to be clear one more time, when you're calling in sick to work, you can either be telling the truth or you can be lying. And right now we're talking about lying. So this guy's advice is he says you have to live the lie in full. And what he means by that is you have to really live the lie and believe it to be true and act as if it's true. So this means not only telling your boss and colleagues, but also your friends and family. You have to tell them that you're sick too. Okay, this way nobody can accidentally let slip that they've spent the afternoon with you in the pub. So let's look at this phrase, let slip. Now, let slip is a phrase that means, it's, it's a really great phrase in English, I love this actually, to reveal something that you intended to keep a secret. All of us have had this experience before, I'm sure. When we intend to keep a secret, when we don't want to reveal some piece of information, but accidentally, it just comes out. We accidentally reveal something that we didn't mean to. So let's look at some examples. Imagine that there's a pregnant woman here. Imagine your friend is pregnant and it's supposed to be a secret. She wants to surprise her family or her friends a little bit later, but you accidentally tell one of your mutual friends. So your pregnant friend says to you, I can't believe you'd let slip that I'm pregnant. It was supposed to be a surprise. I can't believe you let slip. It means you revealed that secret. I can't believe you did that. Why on earth? Would you do that? So my first question for you, have you ever let something slip? Have you ever let something slip? Have you ever revealed a secret accidentally? Let me know in the comment section, or if you've never let something slip, just pretend that you have and make up an example sentence. And I'll try my best to correct your sentences. Hope me from Saudi Arabia, hello to you too. Arida, Arida says, to call in sick, you better have a brother who is physician. He may give good advice. Right. I do have a brother who is a physician, actually, and he has given me good advice before. That's one of the nice things about having a brother who is a doctor. Uh, Patricia says, pull a sickie. Yeah, so that's a great slang phrase too. That So pull a sickie is when... I believe it's it's always when you're lying. If you pull a sickie, it means that you're staying home, but you're not actually sick. You're just lying about being sick, as far as I know. And I believe that's a British expression, but it means the same thing, except you're always lying in that case. To call in sick to work can sometimes be an honest thing. So if you're really sick and you call in sick to work, sometimes you're actually sick. You can also call in sick to work if you're lying. So you, you have both of those possibilities with this expression. Hebo Dagan is watching from Thailand. Hello to you. Taylor says, I wish I had a job where I can call in sick. Haha. <laughs> yeah, Taylor. Well, I have to admit, I've done it myself before when I was younger. I've, I've called in sick a few times and now I've, of course, this is my job, so I can't call in sick because there's no one to call. I'd have to call myself. Taylor Huang says, I let slip my sister's having a boyfriend. She didn't want her parents to know about it for some reason. Great. I, I would say I let slip that my sister had a boyfriend or has a boyfriend, depending on what tense you want to use. She didn't want our parents to know about it for some reason. I imagine that's a very common situation where people are hiding their partners from their parents. I know one of my brother's friends has been dating a girl for over a year, I think, <laughs> and he hasn't told his parents that he has a girlfriend. 
he has a very interesting relationship with his parents and uh, that that is always mind-boggling to me so yeah it, it happens quite often i think great example though taylor nicely done and if you guys would like to practice with this phrase type it into the comment section and i'll get back to you i'm going to keep going here so let's look at this then remember anonymous is saying here he's, he's teaching us how to call in sick to work when we are lying about being sick and he says that you have to not only tell your boss that you're sick but also your friends and your colleagues and everyone else everyone in your life so that everyone knows you're sick this way he's saying the reason to do this this way nobody can accidentally let slip that they've just spent the afternoon with you in the pub so what is he talking about here imagine that you call in sick to work you tell your boss that you can't come to work because you're sick but then your colleagues see you out in the bar later that night well that doesn't look very good then the secret is out that way nobody can let slip that they've spent the afternoon with you in the pub so He's saying, no, if, if you stay in, if you live the lie, if you tell everyone in your life that you're actually sick, then no one will know that you're actually not sick and no one will let slip that you're not slip, not sick, sorry. <laughs> okay, let's keep going to the second paragraph. Lots of vocabulary words here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read through this paragraph and we'll go through each of these phrases separately. Also, set the lie up in advance. What this means is prepare the lie in advance. Set the lie up in advance. I love how meticulous this person is in, <laughs> in planning this. Pretend you are coming down with something the day before you plan on calling in. If your colleagues invite you for a post-work drink, politely decline, saying you don't feel all that good and want to have an early night so you are feeling brighter for tomorrow's meeting or whatever you have planned. And don't up the day after full of life and energy. Nobody ever recovers fully in a single day. Act like you are about 50%. Say, I'm still not great, but it's so boring just lying in bed. Figured I may as well come in and do something, even if it's not much what a trooper your boss will think okay so this is a big paragraph if you don't understand it fully that's okay we'll go through it let's start with coming down with now i'm i would guess that many of you probably know what this phrase is but coming down with is a great phrase to know if you don't first of all it means beginning to get sick so for example i think i'm coming down with a cold what that means is i think i'm beginning to get sick i'm beginning to have a cold so pretend you are coming down with something pretend that you're beginning to get sick the day before you plan on calling in so imagine you want to call in sick on friday what this person is saying maybe on thursday at work start acting a little bit sick maybe mention a few times that you have a headache that you're not feeling well this is all about preparing for your lie. Uh, <laughs> if your colleagues invite you for a post-work drink, so if your colleagues invite you out after, again, we're, we're talking about Thursday here, if you're planning to call in sick on Friday. If your colleagues invite you for a post-work drink, politely decline, saying you don't feel all that good and want to have an early night so you are feeling brighter for tomorrow's meeting, or whatever you have planned. Here's a nice phrase to know, or just a verb rather, to decline. Now, decline can mean a few different things in English. Decline can mean decrease, okay? But it can also mean to reject an invitation to do something. So here's an example, and I've got a question for you in a minute. I invited him to a movie, but he declined. So I asked him to go to a movie with me, but he rejected the invitation. He declined. And it's, it's a polite way to reject an invitation. If someone asks you to go to a movie 
and you say something like, I'm sorry, I would love to go, but I'm busy on that day, that's declining an invitation. He politely declined my offer to go for dinner next week. You'll often see these phrases together, politely declined. He politely declined my offer to go for dinner next week. So a question for you, when was the last time you declined an offer? Let me know in the comment section and let me check on the comment section, it's been a while. Okay. <laughs> Patricia says Freudian slip. Yeah, I forget exactly what a Freudian slip is. But maybe I'm wrong about this. I think it's just when you're thinking about something deep in your unconscious mind. So I guess you don't know you're thinking about it, but it comes out and you weren't thinking about it consciously. So something that you didn't know you were thinking about comes out in your conscious mind and you voice that. I think that's a Freudian slip. And of course, uh, that references the famous psychoanalyst Freud. Arida says, I think I'm coming down with the flu. Well, I hope you get better. Huang Vu says, I let a bad mark slip because my father will be angry. Interesting, I let a bad mark slip. I think what you're trying to say is you didn't tell your father about your bad mark. Sometimes to let something, s no, that's not, that's not true. I think what you're trying to say is I didn't tell my father about the bad mark that I got. So let slip maybe would not be the most appropriate phrase to use here. Taylor Huang says, what's the difference between decline and turn down? Uh, in this situation, when we're talking about rejecting invitations, nothing. Uh, they're the exact same. Decline maybe sounds a little more polite. Like if you decline an offer, there, I think what's implied is that you turned down that offer in a polite way, but essentially they're the exact same. So to turn down an offer or to decline an offer mean the exact same thing. Grace says, I think everyone is pro when you want to excuse, when you want to excuse to have the rest of the day. Yeah, everyone wants to have the rest of the day off. Exactly. Hope says, jobless, there's no call in sick. Well, Hope, I hope you find a job soon, if that's what you're looking for. Oh, and then Patricia says that I got the Freudian slip right, so I'm glad about that. Thank you, Patricia. Nabil says, my boss asked me to do something which is dangerous in my work, so I had declined it. Well, good for you, Nabil. Sometimes that can be hard to do, especially in a position or in a situation where you have that kind of power dynamic where your boss is asking you to do something and you don't want to decline because he or she is your boss. So it would be kind of awkward, but good for you for declining if you didn't feel safe doing it. I declined the offer to receive the medal from this person. Is it correct? Absolutely, you could say that. <laughs> that, that works okay. Huang Vu says, I declined some invitations to go to the bar. Perfect. Seems like you guys understand this word very well. Let's move on to the last two vocabulary words that I want to look at today. We're gonna come to, I figure. Now let's try to find this in the, there it is in the paragraph. So act like you are about 50%. Now we're talking about the day after you call in sick, okay? So you've called in sick, now it's the next day and you go back to work. So he, this person is saying the lie is still not over after you call in sick. He's saying, act like you are about 50%. What that means is pretend that you are still 50% sick and 50% okay. Act like you are about 50%. Say to your boss or to your colleagues, I'm still not great but it's so boring just lying in bed. Figured I may as well come in and do something, even if it's not much. So, and then what a trooper. 
your boss will think. So let's go to this word figured. Now, figure can mean a lot of different things in English, but how it's used here, it essentially means I think, okay? I figured it would rain today, so I brought an umbrella. Now, you'll hear this most often in speech. It's, it sounds very casual, but it is used very frequently, so it's a good word to know. I figured it would rain today, so I brought an umbrella. I figured you would want to go to the zoo while you're in town. And again, it essentially just means I thought. If you said I thought you would want to go to the zoo while you're in town, it would mean the exact same thing pretty much. Very common in speech. I figured blah, blah, blah. A trooper is a fun slang word to know. And let me stress again, it's slang. So you wouldn't really use this in a formal situation. Someone who experiences something very difficult without complaining about it. You could call them a trooper. So I have a picture of a child in the dentist's office here. And you could say something like, he sat in that chair for four hours while they took his wisdom teeth out. What a trooper. By the way, wisdom teeth are those teeth that are the farthest back in your mouth that sometimes people get taken out. I had my wisdom teeth taken out. And this was actually true. I did sit in the chair for four hours while they took my wisdom teeth out and it was horrible. So imagine a child who does that. You could say about that child, he's a real trooper. She's a real trooper for sitting in that chair for four hours. And it means that they sat in that chair for four hours without complaining. They dealt with the situation. That person is a trooper. Okay. So figured I may as well come in and do something, even if it's not much. What a trooper your boss will think. So what he's saying is if you say this line, I'm still not great, but it's so boring lying in bed, your boss will think you're a trooper because your boss will think that you're sick. Your boss will think that you are uh, fighting with your sickness to come into work, to do work for the company, and your boss will think that you're a trooper. That's what that means. Now here's a fun game that I want to play with you guys. So this is how we'll close the lesson. This is true. So this is from the website um, careerbuilder.com. And every year they do a study in the United States about calling in sick to work. In 2017, what they found was 40% of workers called in sick without actually being sick. So 40% of workers had done it at least one time, I think. Now, what I want you to do, I'm going to give you some very strange excuses that people gave. These are real excuses that people used when they called in sick to work. And I want you to try to imagine that you are this person, that you're using this excuse, and that you're calling in sick to work. What would you say to your boss if you had to use this excuse, okay? So keep in mind, these are real excuses. This is the first one. Imagine this is something that someone actually said. A bear was in the employee's yard and the employee was afraid to leave the house. So imagine you're calling in sick to work and you say, boss, I'm sorry, I can't come into work today. There's a bear in my yard and I can't leave the house, I'm afraid. How would you explain this to your boss? What would you say to your boss if this, if you had to use this excuse? <laughs> okay, so we have some questions here. Ida says, hi, Jacob, what is the difference between ill and sick? Nothing really. I'm ill today. I'm sick today. Same thing, ill and sick. Patricia, my friend invited me to take a cup of tea, but I declined because of the live lesson with Jacob. Oh, wow. Well, I'm happy that I took precedence over your friends and her cup of tea. But thank you for that. Patricia says, is it the same as 
figure out. Is it the same of figure out? Declined and figure out? Or which, which word are you talking about, Patricia? I'm a little confused there. Maybe it was... Ah, fi oh, sorry, we were talking about figured before, of course. Is it the same as figure out? No, figure out is different. In this expression and the one that we looked at, it basically means think. Figure out means to understand something after a while. I figured out the math problem. Okay, I figured it out. I discovered what the answer was. I figured means I think. I figured the math problem would be difficult. It means I, th I thought the math problem would be difficult. So they're, they're very different there in those cases. Good question. Hope says, I prefer to go to work. What a project to lie. Yeah, I like that phrase, what a project to lie. It does feel like a project. <laughs> Arida says, wisdom teeth equals dense de sages. My pronunciation was probably awful there, but cool. And I would guess dense equals teeth then, maybe. Grace says, ha ha ha, too much acting. That's why I don't like lying at work. They will figure it out the way you speak. Yeah, good point, Grace. It's easier to tell the truth. <laughs> Patricia says, no bears in France. Ouch, no bears in France. Yeah, so you can't really use that excuse if you live in France, okay? If you wanna to try to practice using this excuse, so imagine you're on the phone with your boss and you're calling your boss to say that there's a bear in the yard and you can't go to work, how would you phrase this excuse? What would you say? Let's look at another one. This employee did not have enough gas to get to work. An interesting excuse. Employee did not have enough gas to get to work. Let me know what you think in the comments section. How would you say that? <laughs> Taylor Huang says, there's a bear in my yard and I'll go to work as soon as it disappears. Perfect. Sounds good, Taylor. I think that's a great excuse. If I was your boss, I would say, okay, Taylor, take all the time you need. Although, Taylor, I haven't heard of any bears in Korea, so I'm a little bit skeptical of your claim. <laughs> That's what I would say if I was your boss, Taylor. And I would try to say it in Korean maybe, but my Korean's not so good. And the last excuse that I have for you here, here's a nice one. The employee's dog swallowed the car keys. This is again a real excuse that someone gave, someone called in and told their boss my dog swallowed my car keys, so I can't come to work today. Some of these excuses are so ridiculous that I almost believe them, I think. It's like, how could someone actually make that up and think that it was a good excuse? So, <laughs> they're quite funny. Figure out equals find out. Figure out is more, it can be the same thing I think sometimes, but figure out is more about understanding. They're very similar. Find out is when you discover. I think that is probably the thing that differentiates them. So if you figure something out, imagine you're working on a problem and you spend a lot of time working on that problem, eventually you solve the problem, you could say, I figured out the problem. So it's, it's more about understanding and it's actively solving something. Find out is more about discovering something. So imagine you hear some information while you're sitting on the bus, you hear some people speaking, and you find something out, you discover some information about I don't know, what's happening in the world somewhere. That's what finding out is. So they are kind of similar, but they're quite different too in some ways. I hope that helps Huang Vu. Arida, a common excuse, the alarm clock didn't ring. Yeah, and sometimes that happens. Sometimes the alarm clock rings and you still don't hear it. 
I have definitely turned off many alarm clocks in my sleep. I used to work at a golf course and we had to wake up very early. I think my alarm every morning would be set for 4.30 a.m. And often I would wake up and I'd hit snooze and I would fall asleep and I'd wake up at seven o'clock already two hours late for work. So that happens. Nabil says, my car don't start. <laughs> Huang Vu, because of the traffic jam, so I can't go to work. Boss, I'm so sorry. There's a traffic jam and I'm going to be late for work or I can't come to work today. There's a horrible traffic jam. Great excuse. Taylor says, I'll have to wait until the dog poops. I don't know how long it's going to take. Another great excuse. Very nicely phrased, Taylor. I'm happy that you, uh, <laughs> you could give that excuse. <laughs> nice one. And there's really no other option, right? If your dog swallowed your keys, you have to wait till the keys come out. So that is the lesson that I had for you all today. Thank you so much for watching. I will be back now on YouTube every Wednesday like this. That's my plan. Uh, next Wednesday, I'll be here. The Wednesday after that, there won't be a live lesson, but I'll remind you of that a little bit later. But next Wednesday, I'll be back on this channel, same time, and we'll have another party over here. So I hope that if you have to call in sick for work in English, that this lesson helped prepare you to do that. <laughs> Grace says, Dear boss, I sent my video to your mail and I can't work for today. Help. I sent my video to your mail and I can't work for today. Interesting. Okay. Well, thank you all so much. I'll see you again very soon next week. And I hope that you all have a fantastic day or evening or afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Bye-bye.